Today on Monkey Life, Shaolan finally has her baby. But the team face serious problems when the new mom refuses to look after it. What, you want me to come with you and leave the baby? And Capuchin Tao proves a big hit with the ladies. Maddie in particular is taken with them at the moment, as well as Sophia, who's been trying to sort of get his attention. Monkey World in Dorset is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. They're all going to have a chance to live proper lives again. Perfect. The park is home to more than 240 monkeys and apes from 17 different species. There's a crisis at Gordon's orang enclosure. Xiao Lan has given birth to a little girl. But Xiao Kuai has got hold of her. Hi, you. I'm a girl. You have a pretty baby. What are we going to do with you? Xiaolan had her baby before the Orang team arrived this morning, so they don't know exactly what happened. It isn't a straightforward situation. Did Xiao Kuai steam in there and snatch the baby from Xiaolan, or did Xiaolan just put it down because all of these guys are orphans and they don't necessarily know how to look after their baby? So it's 50 50 chance that Xiaolan wants nothing to do with the baby. But Xiao Kuai does. She's made that abundantly clear. She's quite a formidable fierce mother, and she's got hold of a new baby. Xiao Kuai has always had strong maternal instincts and already has two children. Her youngest son, Jin, is only two years old and not at all impressed with this new baby that suddenly appeared. Really, we're going to have to start making some serious decisions about whether we leave Xiao Kuai, who's a good mom, with the baby, or we give Xiao Lan a chance to get her baby back. Xiaolan is still bleeding and seems withdrawn. This is her first child. She's lower down in the pecking order than Xiao Kuai, and it may be that she was challenged for the baby. Alison and Jeremy decide they have to give Xiaolan a chance to be a mother, but Xiao Kuai is not going to give up the baby easily. In order to get that baby off of her, we're going to have to give her a full anesthetic because there's no way on this planet that Xiao Kuai is going to let go her new adopted little girl. Doesn't see anything. The park's vet, Mike Nathan, has arrived. It's decided that Kate, one of the team who looks after Xiao Kuai on a daily basis, will stand the best chance of giving her the injection. All the orangs have regular needle training to prepare them for days like this. They want to keep Xiao Kuai as calm as possible. Yeah, she's had it. Just um, took a hand injection, um, so hopefully she'll she'll go down pretty soon, and then at least we can give uh, Xiao Lan a chance with her own baby. Look what I got over here, great girl. We got Jin right there. As the anaesthetic begins to take effect, Jeremy manages to persuade Jin to go into another bedroom away from his mum. Okay. She's still... No, no, she looks pretty bad. With Xiao Kuai asleep, Jeremy has to act quickly so the baby doesn't become trapped underneath her. You just want to help my get her laid out. I'll hold it for you until... Well, you can do this, Alex. No, no. In the wild, the umbilical cord would either drop off naturally or the mother would bite it off and clean the area. As he has the opportunity, Mike decides to cut it to make sure it doesn't get caught. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, squeaky. Squeaky. She's beautiful. She 
she's a beautiful little girl, and look, she's trying to suckle. Yes, it's Jeremy. Over to Jaina. I'm going through the tunnel. Now the moment of truth. Will Xiaolan take her baby back? Batima hoping she'll feel less threatened now she's separated from Xiao Kuai. And try and get it up to a breast if that's a possibility. The baby needs to suckle, and at first, the signs are promising. But Xiaolan quickly changes her mind. Jeremy's determined to give Shaolan every chance to reclaim her baby and tries again. But she doesn't want to know. On the third attempt, Shaolan does at least have a good look. Do you think she's showing even remotely enough interest to try throughout the day, you and her together? I'm not convinced. If she's not going to scoop it up and she's yeah. sort of moving away from it from room to room, I'm inclined to virtually put it back on Xiao Kuai. It's a huge dilemma for the team. If they're going to give the baby back to Xiao Kuai, they have to do it before she wakes up. And they can't keep her anaesthetised much longer. Did you turn that heater up? It looks like there could be a breakthrough. In the wild, female orangs watch their mums bring up their siblings. That's how they learn to care for their own babies. But Shaolan was taken from her mum at an early age, so never learnt these essential skills. She was brought over from Taiwan after being rescued from an amusement arcade. You want me to come with you? Yeah. Leave the baby. So you and I disappear into the sunset and leave the baby. Whatever. I'm kind of with you, I think. I think maybe just a little bit longer, but if you've got Shao Kai down, down it's yeah. But we know Shao is going to do well for yeah. our trouble. I think she's concerned and likes it, but I don't think she's going to mother that baby. Jeremy? Shao Lan doesn't really want to know at all, so Shao Kai. It turns out Xiao Kuai rescued the baby, and therefore she can have baby. Final call? Yep. I think you gave her a chance. Well, I'm going to steal away your baby. You can't stop me. So the decision is made. Xiao Kuai is going to be a foster mum. Fortunately, because she's still feeding Jin, she has plenty of milk to spare. And before Mike reverses the effect of the anaesthetic, Alison wants the baby to have a good suckle. That's sucking, you can see now. See, it's drawing now, you can... That's so far, so good. I mean, baby's less than two hours old, so it's very early, but everything's in the right place. 20 fingers, no toes, no nose, no neck, coconut hairdo. It's fine. Good all right. We tried to put the baby back onto Xiao Lan. She really didn't show any interest whatsoever, so second best is Xiao Kuai. She's got milk, we've checked. Um, she's still under sedation right now, under anaesthetic, um, but we've got the baby on her breast and it's suckling, so we're going to let Xiao Kuai have a go at rearing the baby. It's much better for the baby to be brought up by Xiao Kuai rather than be hand-reared by the team, but they're aware it's not an ideal situation. Xiao Kuai is an excellent mother, but really it's too early for her to be having a new infant to feed. She's got Jin with her, who's not even three years old yet, and he's still suckling. If Xiao Kuai keeps that infant, will he turn into a green-eyed monster and really start having a go at it or not? We'll have to watch that carefully. The team are happy the baby has had enough milk for the time being. Probably better wake her up and give it back yeah, to her, just in case she does some um, in her... Or the falls being, yeah, and drunk. In her sort of okay, let's let it feed it. until yeah, it stops. Yeah. 
But all the best laid plans go wrong, and Xiao Kuai wakes sooner than they were expecting. They have to make a quick exit. The next 24 hours will be critical. The team need to monitor the situation carefully to make sure the baby's feeding properly and Xiao Kuai continues to care for her. There's love in the air over at Fifi's capuchin enclosure. New boy Tao and his friend Bruce recently moved in with the girls because they were having a hard time with the boys. Tao seems to have been an instant hit, particularly with Scarlet, and today they're being allowed outside. The weather isn't the best today, but um, I think Tao will come outside. He's been looking through the window, particularly if Scarlet comes out, he'll follow her out as well. I'm more worried about getting him back in at the end of the night. <laughs> As predicted, Scarlet heads out first, and Tao is quick to follow. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good boy, Tao. So far, the two boys have only met the lower-ranking girls. The Capuchin team have decided to leave the more dominant females till they've settled in. This is Tao's first experience of female Capuchin monkeys, as he was kept on his own as a pet until recently. And there's no doubt he's taken a shine to Scarlet. When she does show him some interest, he quite often does sort of uh, do some little flirting back, and I've seen him playing a lot with her as well. However, today, Scarlet seems distracted, which is good news for Tao's other admirers. He's had a couple of followers, and Maddie in particular is taken with him at the moment, as well as Sophia, who's been trying to sort of get his attention by throwing sticks and tagging them every now and then. But at the moment, he's sort of not overly interested in them. <laughs> tagging is a natural capuchin behaviour, where they reach out and touch a more dominant animal. Tao seems to be cornered. Maddie and Sophia are both fighting for his affections. Sophia went up and sort of tagged him and then ran away. Um, I think she was hoping he was going to follow because um, she looked back and but Tao was busy munching on grass. So, um, yeah, I don't think she's going to have much luck. Maddie hovers around hoping Tao will notice her. It'll be interesting to see whether they eventually wear Tao down um, and he does suddenly take notice of them and, and start interacting with them. But Tao isn't the only one getting attention. Bruce is doing amazingly. He's also um, turning into a bit of a ladies' man. Um, he's got quite a few followers as well. Phoenix has a particular soft spot for Bruce. Unlike Tao, he doesn't play hard to get and is happy to flirt with her. I think because a lot of them are a similar species to him, he does seem to fit in a lot better, whereas initially with Tao, they're a little bit wary, which is understandable. He's quite a big monkey and he's quite striking in amongst all the sort of golden-haired ladies. It's really good to see Tao and Bruce outside, um, and they're both so relaxed and so happy. Um, completely different animals down here with the girls. But there's no respite for Tao. Even when he heads inside, Maddie and Sophia are hot on his heels. Scarlet has some serious competition. Two other residents who are getting on very well are Sam and Sasak. The Siaman Gibbons are happily settled in their newly refurbished enclosure and to everyone's delight, are now singing in the trees. Sam and Sasak's song has really strengthened over the last few months. You can hear that in the fact that it's really well synchronised and also they're singing for a lot longer. <laughs> Gibbons um, in the wild, they naturally sing because they're very territorial. Um, so basically, it's their way of saying, this is our territory, you keep out. 
it's very important that the song is very well synchronised because it indicates to everybody that they're a very strong pair. Um, so other gibbons in the territory will know they can't come into that territory because it is a strong bonded pair that's in that area. <laughs> Sam and Sasak are still getting on fantastically well. They're together all the time. They love spending time, very close physical contact. <laughs> when I hear Sam and Sasak singing in the morning, it's an amazing feeling. For Sam, it's been such a traumatic year. He's had all sorts of ups and downs, and we just didn't know how this was all going to work out. So seeing them both happy really just makes us happy as well. <laughs> It's 24 hours since Xiao Kuai took on her role as foster mum to Xiaolan's newborn baby girl. And she seems to be relishing it. But the Orang team are monitoring the situation very closely. The proof of the pudding is going to be during the next couple of days is how much and enough milk the baby's getting. You see it feeding and it appears to be feeding, but you don't know what she's taking. You know, she's in the right place, you don't know the volume. So the next 48 hours is the telling point, whether the baby is alert and strong and, and obviously being fed. Xiaolan has made it clear she doesn't want to care for her baby, but the team are concerned as she's very subdued. Any mother that's been through childbirth knows that, you know, that causes big changes in your body hormonally and, and chemically. And, and so clearly there's an element of that with, with Xiaolan, um, that, you know, she's not only exhausted physically, um, but she's obviously feeling, you know, all out of sorts in herself. So it's just making sure she picks up over the next couple of days. Alison has decided that everyone needs some normality. So this morning, we're going to try and put Xiao Kuai, the new baby, Jin, back together with Ame and Xiao Lan, because Xiao Lan's just tucked up in her hammock, and hopefully Jin being around will brighten her spirits a bit. But try and get all the ladies back together with Xiao Kuai, the new adoptive mum. The team don't know how Xiao Lan will react when she sees Xiao Kuai with her baby. Xiao Kuai immediately steals Xiao Lan's blanket. Oh, Xiao Kuai, that's not nice. You can't take her blanket also. Xiao Kuai went straight up to Xiao Lan. She got out of her hammock and just moved away. Xiao Kuai is quite a formidable person, so I can't see that anybody's going to mess with her. The dominant male of the group, Gordon, is being kept away from the girls for the time being. He's not been with baby yet, um, and we've kept it that way for today. He's got outside access, so just making sure that he's happy and, and giving him lots of activities. It had been thought Gordon may be the father of Shaolan's baby, but having carefully examined the dates, it looks as though the park's other mature male, Tuan, is the dad. Shaolan was in his group for a few weeks around the time she fell pregnant. The other one that we're looking at very closely is, of course, Jin. You know, he's still very young, he's not yet three. He was still suckling and very dependent on mum. And so, you know, that's not going to stop overnight. It's going to be a gradual process now. And, and Xiao Kuai is juggling the needs of, of a two and a half year old and a tiny baby. She certainly still has milk. Um, the baby looks strong and alert and is gripping tightly to Xiao Kuai. But, you know, the 24 hour mark is a very early stage, um, you know, and really anything could happen at this point, so it's just a case of praying that it all works out and that, that baby will be able to stay with, with Xiao Kuai and have, you know, the best start in life. There have been a number of other newborns at the park this year, and thankfully they all seem to be thriving. But it's not just babies who've made an appearance. The park welcomed its first ever patas monkeys when Jeremy went to Slovenia to pick up Mitza, who'd been kept as a pet for 18 years. Back in Dorset, she was joined by Sissy Jo, who came from a monkey sanctuary in Cornwall. 
Woolly Monkey Sarah arrived from the United States. She was the last female woolly in North America and has now settled happily in Bueno's group. And then there's Sylvester. Hello, Jeremy. Hello. Nice Happy to meet you. you. He was rehomed from a zoo in Spain and has made a massive difference to big orangutan Oshin. She's taken on the role of foster mum, and the two are now inseparable. It's 25 years since the park first opened its doors, offering a lifeline to monkeys and apes who'd suffered from abuse and neglect. In that time, hundreds of primates have been given a safe haven to live out their lives as naturally as possible. But the team know their mission is far from over. Alison is already busy planning another trip to Vietnam. She's hoping to release some endangered pygmy loris back into the wild, as well as track down the gibbons they've already set free. And decisions have to be made about Xiao Ning's future. At nine years old, she needs to move out of the Orang nursery and join an adult group. Attempts so far have failed, but they have to find a solution. As long as there are primates in need of help, the work will continue. <laughs>